Hi, 3D Field is now in version 3.9.3 .3, and like CrimeStat and Geoda, it has a somewhat unusual interface. So in this short video, I hope to show you how to download and run it with the Albertan temperature data. As we've done before, the first thing I think to do is actually to have a good look at the data using Notepad. So I navigate to where I stored the Alberta temperature data, double click on it, and it fires up Notepad where we can see the structure of the data. The data file has 24 rows, one row for each of the sample points, with first of all a column of identifiers, that's here, the x coordinates in the next column the y coordinates, and then the height of the surface, the z value, in this case uh, the mean temperature in degrees Fahrenheit over that part of Alberta. Notice that the separator between those columns is just a blank. And that's a format, in fact, that, as we're about to see, 3D Field recognizes quite happily and can handle uh, quite happily. The next step is to fire up 3D Field, and to do that, we go to Start, we go to All Programs, and find the folder in which 3D Field has been put uh, by the Install Shield. Uh, there is an icon there to fire up the system itself, so we double-click on that. And that results in uh, this little screen which tells us that we have an unregistered version. Uh, the version will only handle less than 50 points and it won't print 3D views. Well, that's fine because uh, we don't want to do uh, any of that and we've got less than 50 points. So we OK that and we get the main screen of 3D feel, which at the moment is just blank. But let's put some data in. Uh, so we go to File. We then go to Open, and we navigate to where uh, we have put the Albertan temperature data. Click on that, and the result is this uh, not very in informative map. What we have is, in fact, a point symbol map. It's not really a dot map. It's a point symbol map in which each point has been labeled with its identifier from 1 to 24, and its uh, z-value, its z-value, in degrees Fahrenheit. Now, what I want to point out about this map is that it's entirely honest. All that it shows is our data. But we'd have a lot of problems making any sense of it, wouldn't we? Cartographically, can we enhance this view and yet remain honest? And the answer to that is that we can by colouring the points or putting in a proportion proportionate symbol appropriate. So if we double click on color points in the map list you can see that uh, warmer areas are in red and the cold areas are in blue with a gradation, a color ramp through uh, yellow, uh, through green uh, linking red to blue. That certainly gives an impression of a quite distinct trend in, in those data. An alternative way to do that uh, might be uh, to shade uh, the points uh, but use circles instead where the size of the circle is proportionate to the temperature. So we can do that uh, double clicking on circle values and you can see that we get something similar. Again indicating a, a distinct trend from uh, if you like northeast down to southwest uh, across the map. Again, those values are honest. We're not doing anything that uh, in any way models the data. But what we need to do is to use that sample of points and the process we call interpolation to produce a model for the field. We can't, in fact, ever know what the values are between the points. We can't go back to Alberta and take more measurements, even if we wanted to. Uh, so what we've got to do is exactly what I asked you to do in step A of this assignment. But now, can we do it by machine? I think you'll discover that it's both easier and likely to be more consistent if we do it by machine. To do that, we need, first of all, to go to Objects 
and then to go to gridding method. The first gridding method I want to use is in fact the inverse distance method. So we'll be doing an IDW uh, interpolation. But I'm not going to select that right now. I'm going to explore the options that we have within that. And it's always worth doing that. This screen shows the defaults that are imposed automatically by 3D field. And there are, I think, two points to make about it. The first is that the search radius here has been set at 81 distance units and or the 24 nearest points have been taken. What that implies is, in fact, that for every interpolation, we search as far as it's possible to go. Uh, 81 is roughly the diagonal right, a, right the way across the screen in distance units of the coordinates that we, we're, we're employing. And 24, as we know, is the number of, of data points. So we're quite happy with that. The second parameter that's involved is the distant exponent. Uh, and you see that that's set at the entirely sensible value of 2. So we're giving an inverse distance squared uh, interpolation. So we OK that. And we now can select the inverse distance measurement. What this now does is to create a fine grid of points across the area. We can visualize that in any number of ways. And again, in the map list, we've got a series of possibilities. The most obvious one to use would be simple contours, which I'll double click on. And notice that, again, we've got a choice. Because the appearance of a map, a contour map in particular, can change according to the contours uh, that we choose. Uh, in essence, contours act as a variable, pa variable pass filter on the data. What I'm going to do is to customize the values so that our contours go from minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit through in steps of 2.5. And that's, in fact, it tells me it's going to give me nine contours if I do that, spanning this space from about minus 8 to about uh, just under 13 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Still pretty cold, of course. So I can OK that. And what I get then is this uh, fairly elegant uh, contour map, which I hope looks something like the one that you've drawn. If I'd wanted to, I could color that map by double clicking on simple color contours. I get the same screen. I've got to choose the same limits. So minus 5 through 2.5, nine contours, uh, which gives me uh, colors on the contours themselves. Or I could, in fact, uh, do uh, any one of a whole series of uh, possibilities. Color relief might be interesting. Again, from minus 5 through 2.5. And what we get now is a rather odd display, but nonetheless quite useful one, showing it as a kind of 3D uh, map. Lots of opportunities here. Now, I'm prepared to bet that when you've done this, you'll be quite embarrassed. I'm prepared to bet that your hand-drawn effort won't be anywhere near as logical and as sensible as these machine-drawn efforts. And again, what I'd like to do is to ask you to comment in the le lesson discussion forum on which of those displays you prefer, uh, which of them you think, uh, or which of the approaches, your hand-drawn one or the automatic one, makes more sense. So it's over to you now to perform the experiments for yourself.